Chapter 132 A Song of Ascents Lord, remember unto David all his affliction, how he swore unto the Lord, and vowed unto the Mighty One of Jacob. Surely I will not come unto the tent of my house, nor go up into the bed that is spread for me. I will not give sleep to mine eyes, nor slumber to mine eyelids, until I find out a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it as being in Ephrath. We found it in the field of the wood. Let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, unto your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priest be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord swore unto David in truth. He will not turn back from it. Of the fruit of your body will I set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I will teach them, their children also forever shall sit upon your throne. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will give her needy bread in plenty. Her priest also will I clothe with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make a horn to shoot up unto David. There have I ordered a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown shine. All right. Let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, we have a song of ascent. This this one that's going out, it's going forward, it's moving, it's bringing us the memories, or the call to remember, as we'll find out in verse 1. And that's where we'll pick it up in verse 1. Lord, remember unto David all his affliction. And we remember every, we have it documented in the, in, in the book, uh, these afflictions of David, how David was forced to suffer under the hands of his enemies, those that pursued after his, not only his body, his flesh, but his soul as well, and his constant turning uh, to the Lord for, for support. Verse 2, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty one of Jacob, and that which he said he would do, um, that which he promised, these vows that he made unto this mighty one. We're talking about Hashem, the Lord, that presence of the Lord. Uh, that holy name uh, that comes through the law, that comes through the ordinances and statutes that he gives us. Three, surely I will not come into the tent of my house, nor go up into the bed that is spread for me. And this is what David said, surely I will not come into the tent of my house, or go up into the bed that is spread for me. I, I'm not going to seek any rest, as we'll find. This is the intent for me. But he's seeking rest for the Lord, for I will not give sleep to mine eyes, nor slumber to mine eyelids. I'm not going to rest again, or to sleep, to to uh, slumber. Um, he's going to be, it's, it, it's a way of saying this, straight about it, straight to the mission, and get it done, five, until I have found out a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Until I've searched out a place for the Lord to dwell, this mighty one of Jacob. And we'll find out the Lord already had a dwelling place, but but David thought in his heart to to make the Lord a place to dwell, and uh, that's we find that is exactly the, what's written. Six, lo, we heard of it being in Ephrath, we found it in the field of the wood. Lo, and we can remember this, that they, they thought it was in Ephrath, or they, they heard of it being in Ephrath. Ephrath is that fruitful place, and we're, we're talking about this ark, this, the ark of the covenant is what we're talking about here. They heard it was in Ephrath, but we found it in the field of the wood. The field is that which is spread out, or spread open and before the woods, or of the woods even, in this case. And these, the woods are these, the forest, the the place of the thickets. And that's where they would find the Ark of the Covenant. Seven, let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. 
let us go into his dwelling place. That, uh, and that's going to be the place where the Lord dwells. We'll find out it's in Zion. That's the dwelling place of the Lord. Let us worship at his footstool. And we're talking about the Lord's footstool, his throne. That's where his footstool would be, at his throne. Eight, arise, O Lord, unto your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Arise, O Lord, unto your resting place. This place where you rest, and we'll find out, it's Zion. That's where the strength of the Lord rests. That's where the ark, or that which calls you to remember the ark, uh, rests. And we'll find out it's the resting place of the Lord. You and the ark. The ark is, everybody knows what the ark is. It's that little golden box. It, it, it's not so much the box, but what's in the box. The, the box protects what's in it. And what's in it is the Word of God. And we learned a long time ago, the Lord put, the, put His law in your heart as well. And it would be a, a physical manifestation of what that, what that is. Nine, let your priest be clothed with righteousness and let your, your, and let your saints shout for joy. Let your priest... Uh, these ones who stand before the Lord, be clothed with righteousness, be clothed with justice, be clothed with equality, be clothed to put on, to have wrapped around you the understanding that Hashem gives you. That's the Lord, the, the presence of the Lord, even in the beginning. Let your saints shout for joy. These saints here are the, to see these ones who, um, um, do what God asks. They, they, they do these things, the Lord. These are the ones who are the chosen ones, we could say. They, they do what is asked of them to do. Ten, for your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointing. For your servant David, David was the, a servant of the Lord. The Lord has many servants. Uh, the Lord has many anointed ones. And for David's sake, David is the beloved, the, the, the beloved one's sake, uh, turn not away your face. And these things that you'll make plain, and we'll find out the Lord makes plain, the Lord makes an example. And this, your anointed, David was one of the anointed. The anointed here is Messiah. It means to be anointed. That's what anointed means. Uh we find out David was one of the anointed. The priests are anointed. It's literally what it means. The There's been many anointed ones along the way. Uh, those that have the law, those that have the understanding of God, are anointed. And the Lord makes plain these things to the anointed. 11. The Lord swore unto David in truth. He will not turn back from it. Of the fruit of your body will I sit upon your throne. And the Lord swore it to David in truth. He swore it. I mean, he, this is what we're going to find out, just what the Lord said. And he, he's not going to turn back from it. The Lord's good to keep his word, just like he said he was. He said, of the fruit of your body will I sit upon your throne. Twelve, if your children keep my covenant and my testimony that I will teach them. Their children also forever shall sit upon your throne. This is what the Lord said to David. He said, your children will sit upon your throne if that qualifier. It's always a qualifier because it's the same for the king as it is for the priest, as it is for you, as it is for me, as it is for everyone. If you will keep my covenant and my testimony that I will teach you. And it's a simple thing, those, those commandments, that agreement that we make with Hashem. It's nothing hard about that, that we will do these things that he has asked us to do and keep his testimony, keep his witness. They say, yes, he lives. He is here now. He is within us. This is how we do it. Thirteen, for the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. For the Lord, that's that holy name, he hath desired, he hath chosen Zion. Zion, Zion is that parched place it is that post marker 
it's that which testifies of the Lord we find upon that marker the law it's what was written plain and simple uh, these that keep that testimony and we find that that place belongs to the Lord that's where he makes an example and that's to those that that take up that position that are exalted to that position and they too have to keep the Lord keep the law keep the ordinances and statutes of the, the law don't just stop uh, with the lowly and poor it goes all the way to the top 14 this is my resting place forever here will I dwell for I have desired it and this is my resting place forever the Lord said here will I dwell and that's in Zion that's in that parched place that's in that place that he made an example of he made an example of his law saying if you will keep my statutes and my ordinances it would be a perpetual thing we'll find it's the same covenant he made with Israel he made with the king and he makes with you if you will make it 15 I will, abund I will abundantly bless her provision I will give her needy plenty and bread I will give her needy bread and plenty uh, and and what this is, is is the Lord will provide that's exactly what it means I will provide I will bless her her provision these provisions are her game that which she hunts that which and back at that time that's where they got their their nourishment their substance was from the land I will give her needy bread and plenty I will provide for those that don't have will because that's what the Lord promised to do. It comes through his ordinances. It comes through his statutes. That's where he does this. He provides there in the law. 16. Her priest also will I clothe with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Her priests. Priests are the Kohen. They are uh, the ones who were appointed uh kind of like guards or watchmen over the ordinances and statutes and laws of God and given another set as well uh, to that they had to keep they uh, and the Lord made an example uh, uh, of those that uh, is he's still working on today and her saints shall shout aloud for joy this is simple those saints are once again those these ones that are that, that keep the law, that do the ordinances, that do the statutes that he has asked him to do, 17. And, and, and this is a simple thing to, to, to raise back up, to restore, to give back the rightful positions uh, once again, that the house of the Lord could be established, 17. There will I make a horn to shoot up unto David. There have I ordered a lamp for mine anointed. And it's that same place where the, where God made this example. I make a horn to shoot up. A horn is is like a strength. And and that strength was to, to be that example, to stand up in that example. And it was given to David and he the Lord said, I've ordered it a lamp for my anointed, for my Messiah, my anointed one. Uh, these ones that God uses for that example, for that, for of His self, that is what it is. It's, ex it's an example of Hashem. It's an example of the Lord. Um, these that are used in this lamp to light, this lamp that lights, or an ability to provide light through this, through uh, we find out it's this burning, this burning of an oil, this this f light that comes from this oil, this fire. We'll find out because it's it's when you we enter into that covenant with the Lord, then judgments, this 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 fire, this lamp, it burns. Eighteen. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown shine. And those that come against him, those that come against this, because the, it's it's a promise, it's a promise from the Lord, that if they will keep the law, keep the ordinances, the statutes. Uh, the Lord would set that throne forever, but we'll find out in in the book in the time of Jeremiah. We we have it documented. 
what these things would come about and how the Lord does make an example and the judgments of the Lord are true and, and the Lord holds true to his word he always does we're going to move forward Psalms 133 turn and return <laughs> 